to a post you made recently on your story. You were like, when y'all comment and say you're going to hell, like, do you mm. think that makes people want to come to God? Straight do you up. think it's exciting me about your God? Do you yeah. think it's getting me excited about the church? Like, right. you're going to go to hell if you do this. Do you think that is really getting me excited? Like, hmm, I want to know God because I don't want to go to hell and you're scaring me into fear of right. loving him. Right. Because if you're loving somebody out of fear, it's not even true love. At all. Right? So yeah. I, I resonated with that post and I was like, I wonder what his relationship is with mm -hmm. God because you said something about um, you come in from the church or the church. I don't know. I don't want to quote you on that. No, so like, but, so here, here's how my relationship went. Um, I was born, raised Catholic. Okay. Um, I did my... Uh, what is it, like second communion or something? I don't know. <laughs> but I was in CCD. I don't know what I did. Yeah, they CCD. Made me do. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> I ate the bread I drank the out blood of the guy's hand. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I, I was hungry. <laughs> yeah, started. Um, so I was like in CCD, which is Sunday school. And I was doing that every Sunday till I was 12. I was in eighth grade. And then I stopped going because... I would go to church and I would be with these people. And then outside of the church, they would do awful things. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was really confusing at that age because I was like, well, because once again, very black and white. I was like, I thought y'all were supposed to be good, you know? So like now this whole thing feels like a scam. Jesus. So, so I'm out. Jesus. Because it felt like performative. Y'all are in here acting. Like you're doing the right things and you're, you know. Mm. This is what we've been leading up to this whole show. This is, this is it. This is, this is what happens when you fail as a leader. This is what happens when you hide sin. This is what happens when you fake, when you become a professional Christian where you, mm -hmm. you have to keep, even though you either stop believing or you stop trying, you still have to pretend like you are. This is the result is that people see through it and they see that this ain't this ain't real. How do you fix that? I, th I think the first thing is um, I, I, and that's why I asked the question about should you get saved in the church? Should you get sh saved outside of the church? Because that's going to stop you from reading your Bible. And if you don't read your Bible, then you're never going to get to the Father. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to get that word in you. So you won't find out that you can have a relationship and that real words will become life to you if you read this book. If you were just going to this building to try to get that word. I think the church is keeping people from the Bible. That's well, deep. if a pastor if a pastor has led <laughs> somebody that's, that's astray and they no longer think this is real or and they and they see it as fake then yeah you got somebody who's not going to go home and open that bible and look for themselves i mean i can see where you're coming from where if it's so programmat programmatic mm -hmm. that like there's no like actual encouragement for you to walk this out on your own mm -hmm. it's all about okay take this class mm -hmm. or talk to this person or do this instead of like really spending time with the holy spirit to transform yeah. you mm -hmm. So I yeah. could see why you would say that, but yeah. I think it does go back to the church having to be intentional oh, sure. in really cultivating, encouraging people to cultivate their own personal relationship yeah. with God. When I joined my church, the very first thing they said was we have to have new members classes. New members classes was seven weeks and mm -hmm. you come every Saturday and we go through scripture and we start doing this. As soon as I finished new members classes, I went through discipleship class. So I had a I had a good foundation of how to get into I, mean, I was already a uh, Christian when I was 17 but when I joined the church and I got serious about being a member like I had been members in youth ministry and my parents took us to different churches but when I got serious and was like oh I'm going to find a place to serve here right then everything became alive to me you know what I mean like I was able to go home and read my word and feel those feel life coming off those pages because I been trained a little bit better on what to receive or what to look for when I'm reading, like how to study and how to understand and how to interpret. So for me, I feel like um, when you have, you know, casual Christianity like this, um, and that's what I see happening with a lot of these uh, podcasters, is that, you know, you get to the point where you find something in the church to blame that you say has kept you from having an authentic, real relationship with Christ. Well, here's the thing, though, and I think you said something a couple of weeks ago. 
where you was talking about, you was like, man, I don't care what Chris do, I don't care what Ryan do, I don't care what James do. Yeah. I, if I got to be the only one legit, I got to be legit. Yeah. And I think, I think people are not like that. And I think what they're doing mm-hmm. is they're saying, well, if this is fake, let me just be fake. And it's like, no, God no, still, God, God, yeah, you do it. You be the one that be the stand, set the standards, be the. Be the outcast of the situation like, yo, that dude was fake, but I want to be a legit Christian. And I think the problem what I'm seeing with people is they're seeing people and they're going, man, we're flawed people, even though these people are acting like they're quote unquote super Christians, because that's what he's getting mm-hmm. at. Like these people think they're um, holier than thou. But at the same time, it's like I my walk with Christ got to continue regardless of my pastor failing or this happened but, or whatever. But imagine seeing that at a young age. There's mm-hmm. there's a young lady I just saw for the f- for the first time in maybe 15 years yesterday. It's probably only 0.01% of the audience mm-hmm. could even possibly figure out who I'm talking about. So I'll say this. I remember her when she was in our high school department mm-hmm. and there was drama happening and I wasn't fully aware of yet. And she came up to me one day and she's like, there's something wrong with the pastor. Mm-hmm. He's not right. I can tell. I know. Like, mm-hmm. she actually knew. And she, I never saw her again after that. Mm-hmm. She left with her last image of this is all fake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This thing that I've been a part of, I've learned from, you know, you, Sean. I've learned from you, Jeremiah. I've learned from you, Maya. I was in the church with you guys. Yeah. This is fake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. If at that age, as young as she was, what are you supposed to do when your first impression of this thing is it's all it's all a show? Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, it's really nothing you can do. Unfortunately, it's. I think a lot of times we want to defend God. You know, we want to go to people in these situations and say, "Hey, nah, you just had a bad experience," but we don't know the level of trust and love and you know everything they invested into that situation that got them to this place. So ultimately, all you can really do is pray for this person. And when you're and when you in your personal life, try to be the best example of what the word says for yourself, because your words nine times out of 10 are not going to convince this person to come back. Unless at that point, the Holy Spirit just hits them and you happen to be the conduit that he uses to do that. Other than that, you're living being the living example is the only thing that you can do in that situation. You know, what I'm saying like it's nothing that you can really say. This guy said he went to church. He was devoted. He was doing this. And he saw people outside there was a bad were bad people. And we agree. Like, just because the humans are doing bad things, like God has getting has been gotten well, has, God has gotten blamed for a lot of things that people who claim to be Christians have done mm-hmm. that God had nothing to do with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we discredit and Christianity and God we walk away from God. Nah. Just go to another church. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, go yeah. to another yeah. group yeah. of people who say they are believers and see how that works. Or start now, a church. Yeah. If you see consistent bad yeah. behavior, then you might can walk away. But okay, just because one group of people, no matter what you, if you're a Muslim, you might go over here to this mosque and they might be full of drama and being petty. You might want to go to another. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. But with Christianity, for some reason, people always want to highlight. I went to this church and this, this and that. Any people group that you go to is gonna be bad and good. Yeah. And you're not gonna dissociate yourself from that whole people group. But what happens is the reason why Christianity, why I do it, the Christianity, because we're telling you to deny yourself. Yeah, you don't want right. to deny yourself. So now it's easy to say, you know what? These people are wicked. They're telling me to follow all these rules. I don't want to do that stuff. They're wicked anyway. Which, but over here, which confuses me about B Simone again. Every video we do with her, I'm like, what does she think now? Because yeah, because she's basically like saying, you know, they're telling you you can't do this and you can't do that. Yeah. What what do you what's your take on her now? Because I'm like it's, 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 it sounds like she's saying it's okay to as long as you believe in Jesus, mm-hmm. it's okay to kind of be I think you know spiritual, yeah. cussing and showing I think your body. She, I think and she's spiritual. She and co-signed Christian. uh Lady London. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. well a couple of weeks ago we talked about that conversation. And then I just was didn't know who Lady London was, so I looked it up and I saw a freestyle she did where she pretty much did everything Megan Thee Stallion said everything Megan Thee Stallion or Lotto or anybody else would say and I'm like wow really like <laughs> two months ago and you just saying like oh I can do that but, but, but she said it in the freestyle I'm a Christian sound, I can do what I want it sounds like her concern is you guys are making this sound bad you guys are making this sound um, scary you guys are making this sound too hard I'm going to try and make it sound better and I'm going to yeah. get more people to become Christians because I'm not going to yell at them and tell them they're going to hell. Mm. The only thing 
I would say B. Simone is, yes, there are people who abuse it in a mm. way and make it seem wrong, but the opposite is also wrong. Yeah, mm-hmm. giving people the impression that they can continue on in their sin. Yeah, as long as they can say that they're. Gee, this is an argument that happened between Paul and himself in in Romans, yeah. where it's like, shall I continue? Like he was speaking for the opposite side. Yeah, shall mm-hmm. I continue sinning since grace abounds? <laughs> yeah, of course not. Right? Of course not. Why would you do that? If you really love yeah. Jesus, why would you continue sinning? Mm-hmm. It makes no sense. And and I just think she's caught in the midst of she's seen a lot of people turn away from God because people have been like, you're going to hell. You know, this is how it is, blah, 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 blah. So she's trying to do the opposite. But the opposite is also dangerous. It's it's yeah. kind of more dangerous yeah. because if if these people that you're having on your podcast go on and think that they're okay, that's they're not okay. I, I said I said this in a post before, and I said it. I said it here. I feel like people gotta understand like judgment from humans is ten times better than the final judgment from God. Yeah, like yeah. like you don't understand the final judgment from you standing before God and you thinking you good, and and He looking at you like I don't know who you are, I don't know you, I don't. You, 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 but I know God, I didn't, mm-hmm. I don't know who you is. And that judgment is an eternal judgment that leads you to where you are afraid people I, telling you going to go. And this is where I hope she lands. Cause I, I feel like I, I still get the sense that she's trying. So yeah, this is where I hope she lands. There's a way to lead people to Christ without being like, you're going to hell. God hates you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a way to do it without yeah. sounding like that. But with also doesn't give people license to continue sinning like it don't yeah, matter. Yeah, there's a way to do mm-hmm. both yeah. of those things. But I, see a clear divide between yeah. her and like Megan Ashley. Like Megan Ashley, we've seen the conversation she's having with Jackie Perry. You know, saying they're talking about you know different aspects of Christianity, and it seems like B. Simone's on the other end of the spectrum. Like you're saying, it's like it's overwhelming yeah. grace over here. You know, what I'm saying yeah. on this side, I'm not even gonna say that uh, Megan Ashley is probably like overwhelming like. Fire and brimstone. No, no, she's not. I don't think she's like. I think what she's saying is like something happened to me where I realized I was living wrong, and I really want to see what this. About. You I really go wanna, all in. I really want to go, go all in and change for real. And I think B Simone. Sometimes your compassion for others and your love for others can sometimes be a. I don't want to say be a hindrance, but it can to a certain I, degree when you're choosing your emotions for the person over what the Word of God says. I think. I think she's scared to go all in. I think she know. I think she took to heart what when Jackie was on a podcast together, and Jackie yeah. said, "This is gonna cost you. Mm. This is gonna cost you some money. This is gonna cost you some stuff. This is gonna cost you your identity or who you think you are. Yeah. It's gonna cost you." Yeah. And I think she took that to heart. Like this is gonna cost me. So yeah. of course I'm gonna still say I'm a Christian and I'm I'm spiritual. I believe in God. I believe in all this stuff. But I don't want to. I don't want to go that far. What it's gonna cost me? Yeah. Do you think we're gonna one day have this? conversation or this statement is going to be made this is joe osteen's fault because i stopped <laughs> listening i'm serious I joe it, 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 it was it was it was it was i stopped what i'm saying i stopped listening to joe osteen dang, when bro. i heard my pastor <laughs> preach something about fire brimstone and hell because it was oh, correction gosh. in that sermon right and i was remembering like all those times i was listening and i would just hear good this good that just you know whatever God, yeah. and it was like that's why we have the. That's why but, you have the largest but, congregation in the, in the country because you're not telling people. But honestly, that it's so many them? people. Every day it's, is it's, Friday. It's so man. many different pastors out here now that these people that we 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 are cons- we are saying that our cultural Christian are, are applying to that cultural Christianity that they just speak to them. They just speak to them. They just speak to them. It's your season. It's your time. And it's just this. And I'm, and I'm saying that's been around longer before Joe Osteen. No, I'm not saying that. I'm talking about Joe Osteen's impact having the largest congregation in the country. You're not going to fill that stadium talking about hell. About hmm? You're not going to fill that stadium up telling folks that, hey, if you don't. Exactly. Submit, so here, exactly. here's the deal. Here's the answer to uh, what I would hope to say to Russ. The people who are doing that around you were wrong yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the people who do that now are wrong Mm -hmm. it is wrong for you to say you believe in jesus and then do the opposite when you're not at the church yeah that is wrong yeah Yeah. them doing that has nothing to do with god Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go back to god and find out what he wants you to do that's Mm -hmm. what everybody needs to do read the word of god find out what he wants you to do don't worry about what other people are doing yeah if they if they 
go astray, you don't follow them. You don't yeah. say just because they did something, I ain't doing it. You chase after God. Yeah. Let him tell you what it is. I think the problem with because these people are so famous that they get so many yeah. So much feedback from Christians yelling at them online, well, so well, they, they try to turn to, it off. To, yeah. to be yeah. honest, I think the reason why he was getting that that you're going to hell thing is because he did a song, and he put out a song where it sounded like he was like, I'm trying to end the devil, and like I'm on God's side, and then the mm-hmm. next song was me and this girl getting up and right, all this yeah, other yeah. stuff. And I think that's why people were giving him a hard time. Yeah, I, I just think... If you're if you're on a journey with God and you're getting close to Him and and you're kind of one foot in one foot out, mm. you're going to get a lot of feedback. Yeah, yeah. Because you're you can't do that. And I understand if you're you're like, man, I was I was on my way, I was on my way, and these people keep yelling at me. At some point, get by yourself. Maybe being a public figure is not for you right now. Yeah. Get by yourself with Jesus. That's the only thing that matters. Not what people are yelling at you yeah. online about. Yeah. Not mm. not what you think you should do for. Get with God and get in the word and make sure you are reflecting what he wants you to be, period. Then go around and start talking about it. Because yeah. I think people start talking about it while they're going through it and it's just not the right time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're not, it, it's like the, the whole seed on the rocky soil. Like yeah. It's not It's not going to grow because yeah. mm-hmm. it's, it's, not, it's not the right environment for it to grow. Yeah. Nice. All right. So we went long. But over 200 people are watching live, man. If you have not subscribed... I, I have to ask this because I assumed it. Yeah. It's not the case. <laughs> if you're not subscribed, go check and make sure you are. Subscribe to us right now. Yeah. We appreciate it, man. We're doing super well this year. Again, our goal is 100,000 by December. We're on our way. So mm-hmm. please subscribe, check, double check. Yeah, yeah. Can I say something too? Because I, I want to put this out there. The views and opinions of Ryan Righteous and not the views and opinions of Trackstar. I noticed and that the, the, the numbers dropped when I said Joel was the problem. There. It was like, oh, gotta Lord. go. So no, come on I back. I thought they knew like line, line for long was about to happen. 